throughout time, people have always looked for ways to better communicate with God. So in this discussion, I'm going to talk about the seven best ways that work for me. Hey, how you guys doing? Jamal Ellison. Thank you guys for joining us today. And of course, we want to know your thoughts on this discussion. So please, before we get started, please like, comment, and subscribe below. Tell us your thoughts. So today we're going to be talking about prayer. Now, a lot of you guys are like, hey, you know, I pray for stuff in my life and nothing's really happened for me. But how do you know that? Perfect example. So in today's episode, we're going to be going over seven different ways that where I've noticed through my prayers with God of how he usually responds. And of course, you know, he may, he's God. He may choose to respond in various other ways, but these are just the ways that are centralized to me that I've seen in my daily interactions with him. So let me know if you guys have anything additional in the comments below. Please share with the group. Number one, through daily events. I know we've all had those days where everything seems like it's going wrong. Nothing you can say or do is gonna affect the way stuff is turning out for you on that day. Uh, that moment, it could be a job, it could be a person, anything. I mean, you could just be having a bout of bad luck. However, what a lot of people don't know is that God uses situations like that to actually bring you closer to Him. Because it's in those moments, those are your time of need. And that's when you should see God the most. God may choose to talk to some of you guys in different ways. Uh, for instance, I've been on various occasions where I've looked up into the sky after I said a prayer and I've seen a sign there, which was a direct answer to my prayer. So God speaks to each of us on our own level. Number two, as your inner voice. So it's like when you're reading a book in a library and you're reading quietly to yourself and that voice that's playing in your head and it sounds like you. Usually that's how God likes to speak to me in prayer using that same voice. Of course, we'd all freak out if you know you went into prayer and you heard a voice back. Behold, like something like that room shaking and all that, you know, like we see in the movies. But in actuality, God just wants to get to know you. And he's gonna speak to you on a level which applies best to you. And he knows you best because he created you. It's a method. Another way God likes to speak to us is by taking away and restoring. Now, I smile when I say this because a lot of people, well, let's face it, I've done it myself. And you're like, hey, God, please, you know, show me the way forward. What should I do? You know, what can I do to become better for you? Please give me the way. Give me a sign. And then all this bad stuff starts happening, you know. Say you lose house, car, friends, all that stuff. In the moment, it feels like the world is over. It's like, what's going on? I reached out to God and everything seems to be falling apart. But it's exactly the opposite. He's actually restoring you. So he's removing all those negative influences from around you, all the stuff that's keeping you away from him and basically building the foundation for your new prayer life. Once you grow into the person who he wants you to be or you get on the path where he wants you to go, it all comes back. And usually threefold, probably sevenfold or depends. I'm not God, but Again, this is what I've experienced in my prayer. So God gives and God takes away. Another way God speaks to us is by restoring that balance in our life. So sometimes we get too busy or too carried away doing all these tasks, you know, that seem so important now at this moment. But in the long run, you know, they don't really mean anything. They are just that, just a momentarily task. With that being said, God restores the balance in your life. He takes all that chaos out of the picture. Once the chaos is removed, what i found is you can hear God's voice a lot clearer. Like once you take all the, the wants and desires away, there's God. And he's, he's been there the whole time. He's been speaking to you. However, you just didn't recognize his voice because it was too cluttered in the room. Now, another way God speaks to us is by removing those negative influences which again can come in the form of people, jobs, circumstances, anything like that. A lot of you guys are probably gonna see this and be like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why he let this go down the way it went down. So going back into the negative influences, for instance, I just use women. Not to single out the women, you know, man, we've had our chances too. But let's just use women in this scenario. So say you're dating the wrong type of individual. Everybody and their mama's telling you, hey, this person's bad for you. You know in your heart this person's bad for you. And you come to God and pray and it's like, dear God, what should I do? And 
God being who he is, he's going to do what's best for you. He'll remove that person from you. Now, this is the part where a lot of people get confused because they don't necessarily want to leave out of that situation. They just want to improve that situation. However, it's not what you want to do. It's what God has set for you to do. So if God says you're not to be with this person, then you're not to be with this person. Where God shuts one door, he opens another. So removing negative influences from your life, God uses that one a lot. Another way God likes to speak to us is by isolation. Being that I'm currently deployed, uh, away from the family, God uses moments like these to bring us closer to him. It's essentially like bringing you up to the top of a mountaintop, just away from the noise of the world, just so you can be there alone with God while he works on you. You know, he perfects you. He sets you on your course that he wants you to go on. And then what happens is once you've got that basis down, then God sends you back down the mountain to help talk to other people, you know, who may be going through a similar situation like yours, though you may not know it. So God isolates us to grow us and prepares us for our journey ahead. And the last one I'm going to cover today is patience. God wants us to learn by utilizing patience. So it's important for us to understand you just can't rush God. I mean, he's busy laying down all these different aspects of your life. You can't have what you want right here in this moment. You pray to God, you tell him, hey God, I want this, I want that. And it doesn't happen to you, you know, for a week, month, years, but eventually it happens. And it's because it happened as God deemed it necessary to happen. So you can't rush God's timing. Just know that his timing is perfect. And this is the part where we're called to have faith. Now, if you guys like today's episode of how to better understand God in prayer and how he works, you know, drop us a comment below. Now, if you guys worked in your life a special way or a miracle or anything the group needs to hear about, let us know down below. Please like and subscribe. We'll keep it going. More inspiration, more empowering content. Please invite others to come to the discussion. And again, thanks for coming.